Hi everyone, it's Leslie here from Heffy Doodle and today I'm having a really good time playing with some distressings and my Hello Squeak Heart stamps and dies. Okay guys, this has been a popular set and did you guys know that it was actually inspired by my pet? He's a fat-tailed gerbil and his name is Fiskers. <laughs> and he's going to be on today's card. We're going to use him, the wheel and the water bottle. And we're also going to be using the Heffy Doodle stitched strips of ease. And I'm going to pair that up with a lawn fawn border die. I want to do some ink smooshing today. Now I have used some acetate in the past for my ink smooshing. But today I'm using a different product. This is just a Ziploc bag. So you can use sandwich bags, but these were ones that I got to keep some stuff in. Um, and I'm just taking two of these bags and putting one over a piece of white cardstock so I can use that as a palette. And the white cardstock makes me um, be able to see where the ink is better. And I'll rub my distress inks onto the plastic bag and then take another bag, scrunch it up, tap it onto the ink, pick it up and move it over to my project. Now I've done this before with acetate, like I said, but what I find with the acetate is that you get a lot of um, traveling with your color. And with this technique, using the Ziploc bag, the Ziploc bag is more pliable, it's a lot softer, you can scrunch it up a lot um, easier. And because of that, I think the results is actually a lot more organic. So what I've done is I've done one layer and I've dried it uh, after I have done the first layer. And I think that's a real trick to this technique. If you don't dry the layers, then you won't get, well, that layered effect. What will happen is your colors will bleed into one another which is fine if that's what you want, but it's a lot easier to create a muddy mess if you do it that way. So I've done two smooshes with my um, first color, which is my mustard seed distress ink. And I'll use a brush to pick up some of that excess ink and splatter it onto my project just to add a bit more variety in the sizes of the splatters. Next up, I'm moving on to my mid-tone, which is dried marigold, I think. I'll smoosh it with some clean water and do exactly the same thing. Now, the important thing here, like I said, is to make sure that your project is dry. And I like to hold mine up to the light and sort of twist it around and make sure that there's no shininess and that will mean that it's actually dry. So for this one, I'm smooshing my bag before I pick up the ink and then I can kind of pull the bag out a bit, which means that I get a lot more coverage on my card. So I get less splatters concentrated in the middle. And because the bag is see-through, you can actually turn the bag around and, and get your splatters to go exactly where you want them to be. Now, I always keep a packet of baby wipes close by so that I can uh, wipe up any messes because let's face it in the craft room it gets a bit messy sometimes and then I've got my heat tool here to dry that off I just love the way it looks so far now for my third color this is ripe persimmon and I actually don't want a lot of this color because the darker colors can very easily uh, take over the whole project so I'm actually going to splatter it first of all with my brush and I will pick up uh, a larger amount of the ink um, with my paintbrush and sort of tap off larger droplets and then very carefully I'll pick up a little bit of this ripe persimmon and gently tap it onto my project. So once again the good thing with this pliable bag is that you can actually just sort of Boop, like press it down and lift it up straight away so you get a really light impression or you can push it down for more coverage. Okay, I'm really happy with my background so let's move over to the rest of my card. I'm using the stitched strips of ease which are perfect for sentiments but today I'm going to be using it just to create a an element on my card and I love that this creates a perfectly straight line with some stitching on it. Now you could use this as is, but I thought it would be fun to dress mine up 
by using a border die. Now this is from Lawn Fawn. I think it's called Valentine Borders. And I'm going to cut out these little hearts right in the middle of my stitched border line here. And this is going to act as a way, this strip is going to be almost like an anchoring point for my little critters and the other elements that I'm going to stamp and add onto my card. So here we go, we've got Fiskars, <laughs> the, the, the gerbil, a wheel and the water bottle. And I'm going to color this, these guys in with my Copic markers today. So I'll add some BG10 to the water bottle and I'll bring in some of that yellowy tones to the sort of plastic part of my water bottle. And instead of coloring him like a gerbil, I thought I would go more like a hamster. And do you guys notice that there is actually separate tail stamp images, which you can add if you want it to be a mouse or a rat or whatever, or you can leave it off if you want it to be a hamster, which is what I'm doing today. For my wheel, I'm going to color it red, so I'm still keeping with those warm tones. And I'll blend my red out with a little pink, which is uh, R05, I believe. And with these reds, they do bleed a little bit. So I like to come in with my white gel pen and just go over that borderline and that helps hide any little um, bleed marks that happens. So now I've got a top folding note card here and I'll add some adhesive to it with my glue runner and then figure out which way I want my panel to be because I could turn it around different ways, but I like it like this. And I'll stick this down and then I can adhere the rest of my elements. I want my strip with my hearts on it to be raised up with some dimension. So I've taken some foam tape and I've temporarily placed it onto some sticker backer paper here, like a wax paper, and then used my craft knife to cut it into thin skinny strips and laid them on either side of the hearts on the back of this panel. Now I can stick it to my card and trim off the edge like this. And I have a nice dimensional element. And I love the way you can see the hearts, the, see the ink through the hearts. I think it's really fun. So my little water bottle is going to go over here. And then for the wheel, I'm going to layer it onto my heart section, but it will overlap the rest of the card. So I'm going to need a little tiny bit of foam at the top here so I can stick this down in place and I'm making sure there's enough room for my little critter to go on the right hand side of that and he will actually be raised up a little bit higher so he is the most forefront element on my card. Now in my Hello Sweetheart stamp set there is a sunflower seed and let me tell you Fiskars loves his sunflower seeds. He will dig them out of his bowl and eat them first and they're gone in like two seconds. <laughs> so I simply had to include a sunflower seed image in the stamp set. So I'll use my black ink to stamp a couple of these on. And the good news is that you don't actually really need to color them because they're black and white, right? So I've done a few of these on here and I'm going to also add one that I have stamped on a piece of card and cut out using the die. And I'll add this just here on the wheel just to bring a bit more of that, those um, seeds to the forefront. Now in the stamp set, there's lots of puns. You know we love our puns at Heffy Doodle. And there is a stamp that says, have a really great day. So I'll use my Misty to line that up and then double stamp that on the front here to get a nice bold black image. And that's it you guys. I hope you all have a really great day too. <laughs> Don't forget to check out Hello Squeakheart over at the Heffy Doodle store and the other goodies and things that we have over there. And if you're looking for more inspiration for card making with your Heffy Doodle products or even more techniques and things, you should head over to the Heffy Doodle blog. We have got some amazingly talented people over there with lots of inspiring projects. And here's some more videos you might want to check out. Have a good day.